In this video, I'm going to be giving you an actionable step that you can do right now to make your dog trust you more. So if you're interested, keep watching. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health needs. On this channel, we break down scientific research in order to inform and educate us on how to train dogs. So if you're interested in a nerdy approach to canine cognition, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. This particular video was inspired by one of my clients in the Recovering Rover program, which is my signature program to treat reactive anxious dogs. And one of my dogs in that program was struggling with his relationship with his owner. And so we immediately implemented this protocol that I'm gonna share with you today, and it has exponentially increased his trust and his relationship with his dog mom. Now, I recently posted a video on how to bond more with your dog, and you can check that out if you haven't already. Open that link in the new tab. But in that video, I talked about the importance of having your dog trust you. And there is a subtle difference between trust and bond. Trust requires safety. And more, more specifically, it requires the perception of safety. Your dog must perceive that he can rely on you to have his back, that he can rely on you to feed, to give food, to deliver water, to have shelter, to have a sense of security. These are all things that come into play with trust. So you're going to do a process called counter conditioning in which you pair a positive thing with your dog's trigger. And in this case, your dog's trigger might be you walking into a room or it might be you fidgeting. And for a longer explanation, a more scientific approach to counter conditioning, I do recommend you check out this video because in this one today, we're gonna give you kind of an overview, but if you wanna like completely nerd out, then that video is for you. But effectively what you're going to do is very absent-mindedly drop a high value treat every single time that your dog looks at you or walks in your direction. You'll see in this video with Jack that one of the things we did was feed him every single time he naturally walks up to his dog mom. And additionally, I had my client look very aloof. I had my client very subtle, very um, discreet and not overt where you're not in a formal training session in this moment. I often will have my clients do something like watch TV or look at their phone or whatever while they do this activity and they're using their peripherals when their dog approaches, they toss that treat into the dog's space and then they just wait for the dog approach again. What you are doing in this technique is you are conditioning your dog to know that as he approaches you, something good and awesome happens. In this case, he gets a high value treat. You can start this activity off with you just sitting around and lounging and being very still and then slowly implement it where you were adding more movement. In Jack's case, for example, he was especially triggered when his dog mom would stand up or when she would walk around. And so moving uh, one one position at a time. We're really thinking about putting one leg down at a time as opposed to just abruptly standing up. The other thing that you are going to want to experiment with, it looks like right here you opened with, you tossed it with an open palm, mm -hmm. right? I would deliberately make sure every single time you toss it, it's an underhand as opposed to an overhand. Okay. Right. So making yeah. sure that you're throwing it from from this position as opposed to like a fist. So this is effectively the reverse of what we were doing with the marker that I showed you with the video. With the video, you yeah. were staying planted and he was walking towards you. And in this case, he's basically staying in, planted in a general vicinity and you're walking into his space and he's reaping the benefit of that. And mm -hmm. as you start to walk in his direction, you're just going to make your little yes marker, the marker that you use, and toss the treat underhanded in his direction and immediately walk away. Okay. Yep, and walk away. No. Don't, don't worry about moving. Let him keep doing his thing. And now, again, you're going to walk in a different direction, still not towards him, but maybe towards like your patio there, right? And as you're reaching closer to him, 
you're going to make the marker feed and walk away again. So when you're doing this, you're never walking at him. You're just okay. walking in his space, marking and walking away. Okay. There's a huge difference between walking in his space and walking towards him. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you're walking towards him, there's social pressure. If you're walking in his direction or in his vicinity, you might just be going to the porch. You might be just going to the back of the yard. You might just be, right? There's other things you might be doing that, hey, if she's going to keep throwing treats at me for it, I don't care, right? This is a bad throw. <laughs> okay. The key is that he's also seeing you walk away because right now your walk away yeah. is also acting as a reward. Oh, gotcha. And okay. depending on how he, depending on how he's feeling, like emotionally how he's feeling, it's, it could potentially be the primary reward. So you walking away could be even more rewarding than the food, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's so important that he sees you do that because it's almost like we're asking eventually he's going to keep following you you're going to walk away and he's going to be like wait come back okay and now we know okay he's he's catching on to the game he's he doesn't quite know all the rules but at least the very least you walking food with food isn't threatening yeah gotcha walk away you think he knows I walked away even though he wasn't looking at me, right? Yes. Like he doesn't have to be looking right at me to know that I moved away. Right. He has peripheral vision just as much as we do. And at the very least, he sees that, or he smells that your scent is getting further away. The other way that you can build trust with your dog is to be have a very predictable structure for your dog. If your dog knows I'm going to eat at this time or I'm going to drink at this time or I'm going to have a walk every single day, if your dog can predict those things about his life with you, that will implement so much more structure and reliability. Remember, trust really comes down to predictability. Your dog needs to be able to predict that XYZ is going to happen and ABC will not not happen right and so the more structure the more predictable you can be that good things happen in this order in this manner the easier it'll be for your dog I also do want to suggest that if you have a new dog if for example he's a new rescue or he's been recently uh, displaced put in a new home whatever it is if that's the case you do want to give your dog a little extra time your dog is trying to figure out First of all, is he safe? He's trying to figure out if he's gonna eat. He's trying to figure out where he's gonna sleep. He's trying to figure out what his routine is. And so a lot of that comes with repetition. And the more you do those experiences, the more he goes, okay, I see what's happening here. I can rely on you to do X, Y, Z for me. So if he's new to your family, do give him a little bit more patience. Again, still keeping that pressure off. A huge point that I like to drive home with my clients is that you do not have to pet your dog. You do not have to physically give affection to your dog in order to establish trust. In fact, many dogs gain trust by not being touched. If I'm working with a highly reactive dog or a dog that is fearful of me, I'm not going to put my hands on that dog because not only is it a potential threat, I mean, I could injure myself doing that, but on top of that, that's not what he's saying he wants. And he, I'm going to be able to build a stronger relationship with him by respecting his boundaries and respecting his space and not petting him without him asking for it. Because guys, on this channel, the number one rule is consent is cool. Your dog has the say, your dog controls when you pet him. You do not control when you pet him. Now this video is really an overview, but I hope that if you are working on building your relationship with your dog, you do go down this playlist. My entire channel is dedicated to treating dog mental health, and I think that that playlist in particular is gonna be very helpful for you.
And of course, if you are looking for a program that is going to coach you on the exact method to rehabilitate your dog's anxiety disorder, your dog's reactivity, then check out my Recovering Rover program, which you can go to getacalmdog.com to learn more about or check the description box below to find out if you and your dog are the right fit for the program. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button to let the YouTube algorithm know, smash the subscribe and notification bell so you get notified when I drop a new video, and make sure to check out some of my other videos to enhance your dog's mental health, and I'll see you guys next time.